guys, it's Sam and this is part two of answering your assumptions about me. So I did a video about this on my booktube channel and I got a lot of responses after I filmed the video so I wanted to do an extra because I really wanted to answer some of those assumptions as well because they were really good. So this was actually my Patreon video pick for the month. Every month my Patreon supporters get to vote in a poll on a video topic that I will do that month so if you're interested in contributing to my channels in that kind of way definitely go and check out my Patreon. It's linked on the screen. So I'm going to dive into Tumblr this time and then head back to Twitter because I didn't have any assumptions on Tumblr before I filmed my last video and then a bunch rolled in right after. I assume that because you were an only child you got spoiled by your parents and were spoiled for choice. Um, I didn't really get spoiled that much. Like my only child like syndrome was that I was really used to being around adults. So I really didn't get like lavished with a ton of things in a way that was like really obvious. Like I've never had anybody really be like, oh, you're such like an obvious only child. The thing that happened with me is I was so used to being in adult conversations around adults. Like when I went to kindergarten and preschool, I just wanted to talk to the teachers because I was just used to being around adults. Like I was always the youngest person in like the family and stuff. So even my cousins and stuff were a lot older than me. So I was just a very like, what would that be like precocious? I mean, I just wanted to be in with the adult stuff and no one like talked down to me or baby talked to me. And I wasn't really around like a ton of peers. Like I got along fine with peers. I wasn't like that independent or anything, but my teachers had to be like, go play with your friends people your own age. And I'd be like, why? I just want to talk to you like I do at home. I assume that if you didn't go into social work, you go into psychology, perhaps want to be a freelance therapist. So there's a lot of overlap between social work and psychology. And I actually dual majored in social work and psychology for my undergrad. So yes, my end goal for like when I'm a full blown adult, you know, like, or just when I'm like in my, I don't know, like fifties or something, who knows? I do think my end goal is to be a therapist and to do outpatient therapy and I do want to focus on young adults with cancer and their families and stuff like that and maybe like grieving bereavement stuff you know stuff that I've been doing but just continue to do that in like a private practice setting. I think you like living in apartments over houses and also that you never want to have kids and get married. I do prefer apartments over houses so I've bitched about this a bit but I do not like the maintenance that comes with houses. I do not like the space that comes with houses at this point. I do not want to fill a house with fucking junk. I do not like the yard work. I do not like the stuff that breaks down in houses. The apartment, you could just call maintenance and be like, fix it. You know, so if I were to ever buy property, I would buy a condo because that's basically an apartment. <laughs> so I definitely prefer that and just like the look of apartments. I, I just like it. Yeah, like, yes, you have like sometimes you can hear neighbors, but I've just started living on the top floor and I haven't had much of an issue. And you can have just as annoying of neighbors in houses because the last house I lived in, our neighbors used to scream at one another. And even though we weren't connected by a wall or anything, I could still hear them. They also had a screaming child. Not fun. As far as never wanting to have kids or get married, I'm pretty positive that I'm never going to have kids. I don't really want to have kids. I am somebody who I will not have children unless I absolutely want them. I have worked with people that blatantly have not wanted their kids necessarily. I just, I don't think that I'm somebody who can be like, well, if it happens, it happens. It's like, no, if I'm having kids, it's because I want them, not because it just happened. Like I'm, I don't, I don't like that at all. And so yeah, at this point I really don't see myself having kids. I don't think that I'll ever change my mind about that, honestly. Although I think that I would make a good parent and that I would raise really kick-ass kids. And I do sometimes think about like, if I would ever parent, this is what I do, that kind of thing. But like, I don't see kids or see babies and I'm not like drawn to them or like, I'm, it's never been something I've envisioned for myself. As far as getting married, I'm open either way. So I, for the longest time I was like, I want to be married. You know, I was like a very typical person where I was like, I want to be married by like 24 or something, you know, like, please. So it's something that's like, I'm open to it if I meet my person, but also I'm open to not getting married. Although I just, I do want a wedding. <laughs> I want to party, but I can party with my partner regardless. So yeah, I, I can go either way with the whole marriage thing, but the kids thing is probably more than likely going to be a no. I assume that you're a far left progressive liberal and a socialist. I don't really know what my like label would be as far as my political leanings, but like definitely, yeah, progressive left. Socialism does not bother me. I do think capitalism has a lot of faults. Um, and I do like all the social justice stuff and, uh, socialist countries and some of the things they do I think are, are pretty good. I definitely fall on the left side of the spectrum as far as American politics, which is 
a clusterfuck anyway. I'm assuming that you've tried the zero waste lifestyle and didn't like it. I don't know, just because you love minimalism. I have not tried zero waste, but I am embracing some things about being less wasteful with things. It's not like one of my main goals or anything, but like, especially with cooking and like meal prep and meal saving and stuff, like I've gotten like the glass containers, um, try not to use as much plastic wrap. I notice I use a lot of plastic wrap with like wrapping up uh, leftovers of like vegetables and fruits and stuff. So I wanna get like the beeswax, uh, plastic wrap and stuff like that. I don't use straws and I never really have, so straws aren't a thing. I don't really use like um, paper plates or things like that. I thought about getting some um, reusable like napkins and stuff and paper towels. There's like bamboo ones apparently, but it's not something that like dominates my thoughts. I, I don't use like tampons and stuff. I use a diva cup and I have for years, but that's not from a waste perspective. So I'm like mindful of it, but it's not like the zero waste lifestyle isn't something that really speaks to me. Minimalism is much more where I sit, but you can have both. I'm assuming that the art style you like is bubbly, cartoonish, animation, coloring, folktale inspired, non-realism, and more like illustrations. Weird description, but I'm guessing that from the art you put up on your walls. I'm not sure if I would say cartoonish animation color. Like, I do like brighter, some brighter stuff, and I do like sort of like, I do like fairy tale kind of non-realism. I do prefer illustrations and to photography a lot of times, but I like almost illustrations that look like photography. Like I actually am kind of looking for right now a print that is like a forest, like forest through the through the trees, like not for forest from afar with like the leaves, but um, looking through a forest and the tree trunks and stuff. But I want it as like an illustration more than a photo, but I want it to be like realistic. So yeah, I don't really know what exactly like my art love is, but I do like really bright art styles when it comes to like comics. I do like a lot of bright stuff when it comes to, or more, more like rich jewel tones, which is what I go for when I go for colors anyway, when it comes to art and stuff. And a lot of stuff with like the sky and space, you know, which speaks to me always. I'm assuming the only thing you are insecure about is your acne. At this point, like body wise, probably. Um, I don't always love my body shape. I mean, like I do actually do like my body shape, but sometimes I like get conflicted about like weight and stuff, which I'm really trying to like lose all of that and do embrace intuitive eating. It's something I'll probably talk about more in the future. Um, but at this point, my acne is so frustrating to me because I've worked so hard on my skin for so long that I'm just exhausted by thinking about it and tracking it and trying different things and everything. And please, dear God, do not leave me any recommendations in the comments because everyone always does and I always shut them down because I've always done it. So I, I've done all the things. I've done, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you I've done all the things. I've done Accutane. I've done a ton of different things for the dermatologist. I've done natural things. I've done food. I've done cleaning stuff. Like, I've done everything. So please do not tell me because that's what frustrates me the most is when I talk about my acne and people are like, what about this thing? Like, I've done medication, I've done everything. So I do plan on pursuing a dermatologist again, but I've been to many different dermatologists and the only time I ever got relief was when I was on Accutane. And my skin was worse than it is now when I was on Accutane, but after chemo I feel like it reset my skin and I'm back to where I was. And it's just very frustrating to be an adult and have acne because I just hate it because I take such good care of myself and such good care of my skin and it's like, why? I assume that your dark aesthetic wasn't always your aesthetic. That's true. If you go back and watch some of my earlier videos, you'll see I used to wear a lot of like floral sundresses. I wore a lot of bright pink, like um, hot pink lipstick and I had like the longer hair. I really came into my aesthetic and finally embraced it after I was sick, honestly. And this is the aesthetic that makes me the most happy. The aesthetic of even the sundress and stuff never made me feel completely like myself. And it wasn't like I was trying to be anybody else. I just was like, oh, these clothes are cute. This is fine. But this is how I feel like I feel comfortable every day in my aesthetic now with my nails and my hair and like the darker clothing and everything. Like I always feel no matter what I'm wearing, like freaking great. So yeah, the dark aesthetic was not always there, but it was lurking beneath the surface. This person has a couple different things that are all different categories, so I'll touch on a few of them. You're afraid of the ocean. No, I am not. I love the ocean. I do not find it scary. I love the ocean and I love space. And I feel like they're very similar things, like, you know, because the bottom of the ocean we know less about than we know about, like, stuff in space. So I find those, like, deep, empty, like, wastelands of stuff we don't know, like, that, it fascinates me. It doesn't scare me. You don't believe in Bigfoot, unsure about aliens, and believe in the Loch Ness Monster. Um, I don't think I believe in Bigfoot. I'm not sure about Loch Ness, and I do believe in aliens. I did a whole like research paper about it freshman year of high school. I love aliens. 
I totally think that they're real. You don't like red licorice. I actually don't mind red licorice. Twizzlers and stuff, I used to eat a lot because my mom loved them. You know, like in the 90s when it was like fat-free foods were really in and Twizzlers were like a fat-free candy. My mom had them all the time. So I'm very nostalgic about Twizzlers, although I can't remember the last time that I bought them myself. I've never bought them myself, but if she had them at home, I would eat them. You started going to the gym because you needed a change in your life. Um, when I first started getting a powerlifting, I don't really know what it was. I just, I don't know. I don't really know what it was. But when I started going back in it, I didn't so much need to change in my life that I needed, like, I wanted to take some control. I think it was after I was sick. It was about taking control of my body a bit more, that kind of thing. And also just, I really like strength and being strong and the look of strength and all of that. So a lot of motivations for going back to the gym. I'd assume you'd want to be a Slytherin, but you're actually a Hufflepuff, even though you aren't a big fan of Harry Potter. Is that an assumption? Because I actually am a big fan of Harry Potter. I'm wearing Deathly Hollow socks right now. I just am not as big of a fan as like some people are, but like I really like Harry Potter and it is a big part of my like culture and everything. So yeah, I am a Slytherin. I'm not a Hufflepuff. <laughs> like I have taken the quizzes and I'm definitely Slytherin. Like, even without taking the quizzes, as I've mentioned, I think in my other video too, one of my core values is ambition. Not ambition in the way of being cutthroat, um, like some Slytherins are, but ambition and that is a, is a big part of one of my core values. So I would definitely know that I was a Slytherin, even without some of the tests and stuff. I assume you're someone who won't stop until you get what you want. I go after what I want pretty voraciously, yeah. Um, but I'm also willing to see that like life can change and paths can change and uh, you can pursue different things and to not necessarily just like bank on things or follow like a certain plan because things change. I assume you are someone who doesn't hit snooze on their alarm. False. <laughs> so false. I, I do hit snooze. I've gotten better as I've gotten older and as, as I've gotten into routine for sleep and stuff, which I'm still trying to kind of firmly solidify, but I hit snooze at least once every day. I would like to get one of those sunlight alarm clocks and not hit snooze and wake up all nice and, and refreshed, but yeah, I hit snooze. <laughs> I feel like you definitely had a pastel phase. This is again going back to like the whole aesthetic thing. Not really pastel. I had like a brighter colors floral thing, but again, not completely bright colors all the time. I would have brighter colors more in like the summer and stuff, but never pastel. Pastel on this skin would not work. You would love to cosplay as the Darkling and honestly it would fit your aesthetic. Thank you. I've never thought about cosplaying as the Darkling. Although now I'm like, mm. now I'm thinking about like me in like menswear like Hasbrecker or something or the Darkling and I'm like hot. <laughs> that would look really good. I look fucking good in menswear. I don't actually own like a lot of it. I own like men's sweaters. We've talked about this but I should get myself like a suit or something because I look freaking good. I've done a couple Instagram stories where I've tried on like suits that are very menswear inspired and you all are like hot damn. <laughs> like, it's a good look. I should embrace that. I really should. I assume you're a femme fatale that has a night job of being a vigilante. Thank you, I wish. <laughs> that is like my alter ego. I do think about being a vigilante more than you probably should. You like your water ice cold even in the dead of winter? Yes. <laughs> I have a hydro flask, which is one of those like big water bottles that keeps your drinks cold. And I always have ice in it and ice water. Like I can't drink lukewarm room temperature water, even if it's just like slightly cool, like I have to have ice water. <laughs> and that is it. I've officially, I think, answered all of the assumptions about me. So again, just like last time, comment them below and let me know if there's any that surprised you or any that you feel like you want to know, like you have another assumption about me that you'd like to know and I'll answer you in the comments below. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye. <laughs>